we are in NXT 2.0, as I'm about to get interrupted, filled with colors, weddings, new people, and highly, highly produced shows. And this is the new generation. And we're all just gonna hope that this sale is somewhat soon. Welcome to a brand new episode of Can We Talk Wrestling where we are dissecting the newest edition of NXT and we are starting thought it was nice the setting you could totally feel the atmosphere with the fans I thought that the entrance draft looked a little bit too much like the main roster or kind of like pay-per-view ish and I really don't like the colors I love black and gold I'm all about black and gold those are two of my favorite colors so this multicolor Nickelodeon Disney things can get a lot getting used to but other than that I thought it was okay I will admit it was very highly produced I am kind of noticing similarities between that and Raw and SmackDown, but that's okay because this is just the new vision that everyone wants and I can't do anything about it. So why am I going to sit here and complain about it like everyone else? Difference. So what do we talk about first? The debut of Rick Steiner. So this is the first mistake NXT made. So they changed Rick Steiner's name. I don't know it off the top of my head, but they changed Rick Steiner's name and he debuted against LA Knight who was in the Fatal 4 match to crown new NXT champion, and we'll get there, and LA Knight lost. Now, I understand why you want to put Rick Steiner over, because it looks like he, at the end of the night, like, he's going to face Champa at Halloween Havoc or whatever the next favorite is going to be, but if the man is in a match for a title, why would you book him to lose? You have a very in-depth, like I know you can't put up a lot of people, but you have a really nice roster. You're gonna put anyone out there. You, like what, like this was stupid. I under, like, uh, like I said, I understand why Rick Steiner won. Not against LA Knight. But Rick Steiner won, he looked really good, really strong. Um, you could definitely tell he is one of the Steiner, like he's probably the Steiner brothers. But it was good, I liked it. And he looked, like I said, really smooth, and it looks like he's going to be in that first year with Ciampa, which very much screams, you know, this new era of NXT, because as we saw throughout the night, there was a lot of people that we had no idea who they were. Um, and I don't mean it in a bad way, but I I literally looked at my TV half time, and I was like, who? Where where did you come from? So that was really confusing. So I'm going to say in this video, I'm going to mess up a lot of people's names. But it's okay. So the other cool thing was that we saw BFAB debut and I've actually heard a lot of good things about her and she debuted against Katrina and the match was pretty good and B5 won of course and now Legada Fantasma and Electrica Lopez who's the girl figure in Legada Fantasma they kind of had to stare down B5 and her shared words so this is going to eventually lead to a singles match between the two of them possibly next week and then like an eight man tag like is what's going to be like the bigger picture of this I like this feud. I think that Hit Row is probably one of the best things that happened in NXT. I think they're super, like, electric. I love their character. I just wish Isaiah Swerve defended that North American Championship a little bit more. Um, I know that he wrestled Santos, but, you know, I feel like that North American title is kind of getting lost in the shuffle because, you know, there, he is in a tag team program right now. So I'm really hoping that when this feud is over, we focus back to Isaiah Swerve's a North American champion. We should really focus that he's a champion. But from there, we get to this fatal four match. So this fatal four match was between LA Knight, Tommaso Ciampa, and this Pete Dunne, obviously. And I forgot the guy's name. His first name is Vaughn. Stick with that because, like I said, a lot of new people. Um, so 
They put Vaughn in because Ridge Holland and Pete Dunn beat up Kyle O'Reilly, so they took Kyle O'Reilly out, which was kind of disappointing because I know a lot of people, like a lot of people thought Pete was going to win because he actually signed a new three-year deal last night. And everyone's like, oh man, like, and I, it made sense for Kyle to win. I thought Kyle was going to win at first, but I really want Chopper to win. And this match was really good. Um, I don't like that they inserted a big guy in it. I think that really ruined the dynamic because the Fatal 4 with all four of them, like the original four, was going to be really good because they all have very similar wrestling techniques except for Pete Dunne, who's obviously a little bit more technical than the rest of the field. But I didn't like how they entered a big guy in there because this episode just screamed, yeah, we're getting rid of our independent talent. We're moving over to bigger stars, as I described to my roommate why they were doing that, because she knows the two. TJ. But the match was good. I thought Vaughn did look really good within the match. But like I said, would have rather had Kyle in it. But shockingly, despite what everyone thought, Tommaso Ciampa won. The big dude didn't win, Tommaso won. And I'm really excited for this. I think that this was the right move because Ciampa is such a stable within NXT and he's one of those people because of the injuries he's had within his career that just can't move up to the main roster because his body can't handle it. So if you're gonna keep him down in NXT, even though you're rebranding the whole thing, why not put the title on him? And you know, after the wedding, which we'll get to, um, him and Rick Steiner and then Ciampa had a stare down. So it looks like that's where we're going in. I'm really excited for that. I. I see I see him winning. I see Rick winning just because, you know, like, that's what we're looking towards the future and, like, that's how they're going to start centering NXT around is just those bigger guys. But I want Ciampa to hold on to a little bit longer because I feel like now that that just hurt, there's nothing for Ciampa to do and I really don't want Ciampa to get released. So, see what happens with that. But we had a wedding, so I'm going to tell you a quick story. So, obviously, I room with five people who have never watched wrestling before, but I had my one roommate who's watched wrestling with me the past three years. And it's her first wrestling wedding, and I'm like, you know, someone's either gonna get, like, put to a cake, or something's gonna happen at the old door, like, this is what to expect, it is not a regular wedding, expect shenanigans. And we're sitting there, and we're watching this whole wedding, and the wedding ends, and she goes, you know you lied to me, because nothing bad happened, and I go, you want to see the statistics of bad things that happen in weddings, compared to, like, this one, like, the stats aren't there. So, this wedding... It was, like, this screen very biblically, but it was very funny. Um, Johnny and Indy just walking down the altar very awkwardly. I liked that this wedding actually had guests. I thought that was super different because I don't necessarily remember the last wrestling wedding that actually had guests in there. So I liked that. Um, they did the little thing where Austin, like, Austin came back and Johnny's like, Austin, where are the rings? And he goes, we're in our ring. And he goes, yeah, but, like, where are the wedding rings? So I thought that was really funny, too. I also liked how Cora Jade, Cora Jade's my spirit animal because she was wearing bands with like her bridesmaid dress and then like Candace was like, oh no, you can't wear the beanie. Unbelievable. Had to go with everything, as you could say. Then, the, so they were doing their vows and Dexter Loomis basically orange casting Indy and was like, I do, like, I love you too. And the priest was like yelling, like, you can't, like, your wife just poured her heart out for you. Why are you going to do this? So Dexter took out the minister. So now Johnny's like, oh my God, like, what are we, like, what are we going to do? The guests were like, oh, Johnny could do it. And then they were like, William Regal can do it. And William Regal's like, I want no other part of this. Like, whoa. And then Beth Phoenix was like, so I got ordained last night because I thought something like this would happen. And here we are. And the wedding actually ended very peacefully, even though everyone objected. And the Dexter friend up with an ax. But this was really fun. I mean, obviously, because it's a movie, we're going to have these PG segments in there, but it's okay. I like a good laugh, and, you know, it actually made my day a little bit. Like, I had a bad day, and it made me smile, so that, that was pretty good. So, overall, I'll say that it is going to definitely get some taking used to, just because, like I said, like, they're rebranding the whole division. And there are going to be a lot of bigger guys, and a lot of people we don't know, but that's okay. I'm only on hope. Don't want to judge too yet. yet. But I thought the episode was okay. I didn't think it was terrible. Obviously, it wasn't the greatest I see episode ever. Like, <laughs> but I thought it was okay. I would definitely rate it like a six out of ten. And I think I'm gonna rate it higher than a lot of people because I already saw a lot of people complaining about it. But that's it for me. Um, make sure to tune in tomorrow for my AEW review. Super fun. I get to review for Kyle and Tipsu. Um, and just follow all the stuff in the comment. The link below. But yeah. Bye.